Okay, I wanted to do a little demonstration to talk about the final stages, final life stages of stars, or the death of stars. And what I've got to represent my stars are some soda cans. And in each of these soda cans, I've put a little bit of water. And I'm heating up that water in this hot plate, and I'm creating steam. That steam is zipping around inside the can, punching outward. And this is very much like what stars do through most of their lives. They're spending this, their entire lives fighting a battle fighting a battle between the energy they're producing at their core, creating a radi radiation pressure outward, like my steam is, and their own gravity. They're made out of matter, and therefore they have a gravitational crushing force inward, much like atmospheric pressure, the air in this room, is trying to punch inward on these cans. And most of the time, for most of their lives, Stars are very happy. They're, they're equal. They're able to produce enough pressure outward to balance the crushing force inward, much like these cans. Now, what happens when the star can no longer produce energy at its core, when it runs out of fuel? Like what our, what our sun's going to do in about 5 billion years. It's not going to be able to produce energy at the core, and gravity does not quit. Gravity keeps on uh, crunching inward. And so let's see what happens when I turn these cans upside down in a pan of cool water. Because what's going to happen is the steam inside the can is going to condense back into liquid water. I'm going to have no water vapor molecules inside punching outward, kind of like when the star runs out of fuel and it can no longer produce radiation pressure. And yet atmospheric pressure here in the room is still going to be pushing inward, much like a star's gravity is going to be pulling inward. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to take my Coke can, and this is going to be representative of our sun. So, in fact, I hear the other one, the one on the far side here is crackling a little bit. Ah, they're, both, they're both pretty good. So you should be able to see a little bit of steam coming out. Let's see what happens when I take this can and turn it upside down. Notice what happened. The can crushed. Just like our star, our sun, will become smaller because its gravitational force will make it smaller. However, notice it didn't crush down to nothing. Okay. Stars, like our sun, will crush just so much until their atoms get close enough that they can be held up by their own electrons. It's called electron degeneracy. The opposing force of one electron against another essentially gives the star a foothold. It crushes, 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 just down to the point where it can't crush anymore because it is held up by electron degeneracy. And it forms what's called a white dwarf star. That's what our sun is going to wind up being, kind of a remnant of a star. Our star, however, is not the only star in the sky, right? There's plenty of other stars. In fact, many are much larger, more massive. And if something is more massive, it's got more mass and more gravitational crushing force. And so a larger star, such as this seltzer water, is going to be a larger star than our sun. Let's see what happens to it. It's going to crush as well. In fact, larger stars actually explode in what's called a supernova. And the remnant is then left to crush down on itself until electron degeneracy can't hold it up. It actually crushes down even farther. For electrons get forced to combine with protons to produce neutrons in the, store, in the star's core. And you wind up with an even smaller remnant. Remember, this is our star, a star the size of our sun wound up this size, white dwarf size. This star started out larger, but wound up becoming smaller. The only thing that saves it from crushing down to nothing is what's called neutron degeneracy. Neutron degeneracy is the foothold for stars like this. This is called a neutron star, and quite often these guys, they're so small, they've crushed down, they had some sort of a sense of spin, and you know how a figure skater will, will spin faster when arms are pulled inward? Same thing with this pulsar, this neutron star. It winds up being so small, it spins really, really fast. It's called a pulsar. Now, there's one star left, right? 
Let's watch this guy. This is an even bigger star, even bigger than the star that turned into a pulsar. This star crushes down. Electron degeneracy doesn't save it. Neutron degeneracy doesn't even save it. It gets smaller, 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 smaller until it's gone. It gets so small it forms a singularity in space. All that mass into such a small volume that it has such a, it's such a dense object that it has a strong gravitational field, light can't escape it. That is what is a black hole. So a black hole is a massive star that has exploded and shrunk down to such a small object, such a compact object, the gravitational force of which is so strong that light can't escape it. That is a black hole. So these are the three final stages of various mass stars. White dwarf, white dwarf, neutron star, and black hole. So hopefully you learned a little something, you enjoyed that, uh, you know, even if you didn't, or perhaps because you did, if, uh, if you didn't enjoy that, it could be because I was crushing cans. I sometimes find that crushing cans can be so depressing. Some people say a star is a giant hydrogen smash. What was made out of degenerate matter? Degenerate matter fights against gravity. Just a teaspoon of the stuff has amazing density. It weighs 16 tons. Stellar spec. It was a huge star. This is all that is left. Degeneracy is the white dwarf's foothold, and for billions of years it will continue to glow. If you start with the star slightly larger in size, it's a whole other story. When that star dies, when that star dies, electrons can't bear the weight. The star explodes and leaves a core of neutrons degenerate 100 million tons and get much more dense. Neutron star's gravity is mighty intense. The city sized sun it can be seen from a fire spin in several times a second, and it's called a pulsar. An even bigger star, I just have to warn you. It's a stellar version of the Hotel California. Cross the event horizon, and there's really no doubt. Maybe easy to get into, but you never get out. It's infinitely dense. The singularity will turn the human body into spaghetti. It's a dip in space time, even life can't escape. It's called a black hole, a giant star's final fate.